I'm super stoked to have you here. I had, yeah. uh, like I said, I had not come across your channel. I had a friend um, who I really trust her opinion. She was like, you should really check out this uh, detransitioner story. It's pretty wild. And I was like, okay, let me, let me do that. And so here you are. So thank you for, for coming on. Yeah, not a problem, man. Um, I'm all about, and, uh, and oh, uh, by the way, I'm an open mm. book. So, cause I did notice yeah, the, yeah. The, the one, the one interview I, uh, video I watched this morning was with the Thomas guy. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, I noticed a couple of times they're like, I don't know if this is, you know, I, I don't know mm. if like I'm getting too deep into the darkness or whatever, but yeah, like, I'm open book, dude. Don't okay. Even, don't even worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want people to get, I don't want to like, you know, step into somebody's boundaries. Um, but of course, like I have none, <laughs> <laughs> however far you want to go with this, we're good. Uh, we'll just, uh, start off with a, a very brief, you know, intro. Who is Kevin? Well, <laughs> I am Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Well, I've worn many hats in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. but I'm just a, I'm just a guy. <laughs> just a guy. I, uh, I'm just a guy. Um, no, I've uh, been doing lots of things uh, before transition and everything. I mean, I was a drummer in a metal band. If, if you're from Tucson, oh, nice. I played the Rialto before. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a big deal here. But, yeah. you know, uh, so I was a drummer. And then, of course, I worked at Guitar Center in the drum department and I did that for a while. Then I got yeah. into car audio for a little bit. I've had many warehouse jobs. Um, and uh, the last thing I did pre-transition was I got into um, auto mechanics and shit. And so, like, I'm actually still technically a Ford certified yeah. technician. Um, it was about two two classes shy from being an engine master. So, right on. so you're the guy I need to go to to get some drum lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so rusty. I haven't played seriously since 2007, so yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> if I'm the best. Um, uh, there's a there's obviously a lot that we're gonna get into, so we'll kind of uh, you know go back a little bit and then jump forward, and then obviously go into where you're at now. Um, right. A lot of stuff that you said stuck out, and. Uh, I guess we'll start with you. You discussed dysphoria or feeling different um, right when you hit puberty. Prior to that, you didn't really, um, you know, see any signs of that when you look back. And but it wasn't until oh. puberty. Um, well, I mean, I mean, it, it wasn't as hardcore as it was gotcha. like, at puberty, mm -hmm. and. I still really, even at puberty, didn't really know what it was and everything. Yeah. But prior to that, you know, in the mm -hmm. really younger years, I, I mean, I, I've I've known I was different. I've known I, I knew that that much. Uh, yeah. I one specific memory that I can remember, which because I've got a really horrible memory, and about ninety percent of my childhood has been blocked out. Don't know okay. why. But um, one memory I do have is I remember being at my at my cousin's house and uh, her and her all of her friends and everything they decided hey let's go let's let's go in a, let's go into my uh, my room and, and we'll do you up like a princess and every, or whatever makeup and, and stuff like that and of course naturally I was mm -hmm. like uh, fighting it and everything but you know eventually I caved and and you know and I liked it you know? yeah but you know I had to put on that front. Um, but mm. yeah, uh, so I mean, like I said, I always knew something, something was, I just okay. didn't know what it's that young mind. And it was before the, you know, trans gender mm -hmm. became like super mainstream and stuff, you know, cause I mean, it was yeah. the late eighties, early nineties and shit, you know? Right. So mm -hmm. you that shit's still taboo back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, you did mention, uh, so you just, you can't recall, um, if you don't mind me asking, like there's your, you can't recall certain memories and you said like your memories are blocked. Is this like related at all to like trauma or you just, you know, Possibly. just have a poor memory. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, okay. Which we don't have to get into by the way. I'm, I'm just pointing that out. Cause I was wondering, uh, because you did say that and that's very common with, you know, people that have trauma. So I was just yeah. curious. 
Probably. I mean, like mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And um, I mean, I absolutely, I'm sure me and many other people can relate to puberty hits and everybody's like, wow, this is a weird time. Uh, more so if you start to feel as though you can't really connect too much to your body or what's happening to your body is changing in a very odd way that you don't expect. Um, you, you said basically in one of your videos that you felt as though you were going through the wrong puberty. If, if you don't yeah. want to kind of uh, just elaborate a little bit on that. Um, I mean, like the specific story that I said in my video was mm -hmm. like, you know, I would look around and I'd, I, I'd start seeing, you know, the girls starting to, you know, bud and, you know, start getting yeah. boobs and stuff. And, right. and I'm looking at them like, I'm looking at them in two lenses though, you know, like one, like, Whoa, what the hell? He, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like, like a boy would. And then, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm like jealous and like, like, what the fuck? Where's mine? Oops. Sorry. No, but, you're, you know, you're where, where's mine? You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, that, that's, that, that's what I should be, you know, having. Yeah. And stuff, so do you feel like, uh, it, looking back now, do you feel as though, was there maybe a confusion in admiration? Like maybe you were attracted to and admired, women so much that you confused it with like wanting to be a woman you know that's a that's a good uh um observation there i i you know it might have been hmm. it might have been yeah and uh possible. yeah because i mean i i know personally for me it was the opposite of that i you know uh around my teens I found myself looking, looking at men and thinking, am I supposed to be attracted to men? Am I attracted to men? Um, but you know, when I think about it, I was admiring or appreciating the male sex features that mm -hmm. I personally felt like I should I have really, had, you know, you I know what relate I mean? to you on that. I can't, yeah, I, okay. I looked at women kind of the same way. Okay. Yeah. Kind of, uh, but of course, I was also a horny teenager, so I asked <laughs> the other way too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, but uh, and then you kind of jumped to your dysphoria, more so got intense around your like late teens, early twenties. Mm -hmm. Was it some th something in particular that that made it come back so hard like that, or or just I don't know, you know time? Yeah, I mean. I don't know. It's just it. The best way I could describe it is, um, I don't know. Like, uh, I'd get, I'd get. Well, I was I was a big drinker back then, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'd come home loaded and everything, and and like, I don't know. I'd just get these urges. So I always had like you know a stash of clothes and and stuff. And yeah, so, and one time I was on shrooms, man, and <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> I mean, we can we, we can go into that story if you want. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> well, uh, that you was saw yourself. Night. You took shrooms and you saw yourself as a woman. Oh, I've had like uh, with halluc hallucinogens. I've, yeah. I've had some interesting, interesting. Um, do you know what channeling is? Um, slightly, but you know, feel free to explain it a little bit on a deeper level for us okay well basically what channeling is is like you especially when you're on um hallucinogens and that uh, mm -hmm. pineal gland gets activated which is also called the third eye right um yeah wow, i did not expect to be talking thinking <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's cool <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so once, once you blast open that third eye right yeah um you open yourself you open yourself to spirit you open yourself to all sorts of shit right yeah um <clears throat> One night, um, and I don't know what this uh, entity was or whatever, but like you know, a spirit like kind of just like took over. <clears throat> she she called herself goddess, and that's all I fucking remember hmm. about that. But um, yeah, it, it was weird. Like I, I literally, I literally felt like I was in the passenger seat of my own body, right? And like I kind of was just her. Um, so wow. that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, had I, How did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Did, was was I? Is this before transition or after? No, it was oh, during. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was, it was actually during. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. So during exactly. transition. Okay. Well, let's not go there yet, though. Um, <laughs> although that is an interesting story, and um, especially, I mean, I've never 
taken I've never taken that kind of a uh, drug so that that is I wonder what would happen to my brain do I want to know <laughs> probably not that's, <laughs> that's I mean that's 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 up to that's up yeah. to the, the beholder there like yeah, I, I'm sure. not advocating for hallucinogens mm. no no I mean me neither like yeah don't do drugs uh I don't know <laughs> drink water and uh, go to yeah. school <laughs> so uh, but kind of going back to your you know story you did mention uh and I don't want to cause confusion here because I, I know one thing for sure. You know, some people like to really uh, break down tr trans people into like two sets, like you know, true trans people, and then oh, uh, yeah. actually, let me be specific. Especially when we're talking about trans women, right? We'll talk about you know, true trans women, and then we'll talk about like fetishists. And so mm. I'm not trying to bring this up to claim that you were that type, um, but I, I did want to question a little bit about, you know, when you were suppressing the desire to, or, you know, t dealing with the, I'm assuming this is how you were coping with dysphoria. Um, you said that you would like, you know, um, buy certain clothes, but it was a secret in your bedroom or your apartment, but you wouldn't go out like that. You felt, no, yeah. you felt like, was it shame that you fell or you just weren't sure? Or I don't think I was just, I just don't think I was ready at the time, you know, weren't ready. Okay. Like, you know, I just, I was deathly afraid of anyone finding out, you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because <laughs> of all the stigma, obviously. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I am not religious at all, but like mm -hmm. I was brought up in a, uh, you know, pretty Christian environment and everything. So, you know, my whole life it's been shoved down my throat that that's wrong. Yeah. So like, I still had that, that kind of, mm -hmm programming in my mind and yeah. so you know i'm all thinking man i'm gonna go to hell for this yeah. but like <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah. i'm already going to hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about in regards to sexuality you know again like we're still you know uh, coming to terms with transition but not transitioning yet uh, as part of your story was there ever any any doubt in your sexuality um with the dysphoria yeah. or well, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've experimented uh, I've experimented with men uh, mm -hmm. pre-transition, and because you know, at, at the, I thought it, before I knew before I knew like what yeah. was really going on, which I'm not even sure that was what was really going on, but you know, I'm, I thought I might have been gay, so yeah. you know, I, I tried dudes out for a little bit. Right. It wasn't wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then even after transition, I, I tried to go the dude route and it still wasn't for me. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, I have, uh, I definitely relate to that. You know, again, going back to the whole confusing, uh, admiring the opposite sex and, uh, what I should be attracted to or not like that. That was, I can definitely say that I was, took me a while. Cause it's really confusing when you don't feel necessarily, uh, connected to your body. And then at the same time, obviously hormones and being attracted to, you know, especially during your teens, like you're drawn to, uh, you know, men or women, whatever it be. And, and uh, yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like that's a really confusing period for me anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And uh, your story, basically, uh, from what I gathered, you, you decided, actually, I'll let you say this because this is kind of a, a heavy part of your story. Um, you basically around your late twenties, um, you know, know where going. yeah. Yeah. So if you'll, if you want to go into that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I, there came a time, um, where it was, uh, it was pretty much a life or death decision. Cause like I had all, I had, I had mm -hmm. to make a choice. Uh, well, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, yeah, I had to make a choice, uh, which is a hard thing for me to do because I'm a Libra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just like it, it got to the point where it was so unbearable. Like I wanted to transition, mm -hmm. and. But my brain, my my brain was still fighting it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, it, I guess it's I guess I guess it comes down to the two halves of the brain. You know, yeah. one's 
one side's like, we got to do this, man. We got to do this. And the other side's like, no, we can't do this because reasons, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I did. I had a, a loaded gun and I did put that thing in my mouth. And That's that's intense. And that's, uh, that's when I, uh, that's when it became real. Yeah. So I, I, I put my Libra aside and mm -hmm. pulled the... <laughs> <laughs> pulled the <tr> <laughs> bad analogy or bad bad choice of words. Yeah, decided to go the route of of transition, mm -hmm. and and that was the day I I did it. Leading up to that moment, you had mentioned like you know you had really se severe de uh, depression, right? Like you were really depressed, and it wasn't just the dysphoria. Just just to be clear for anybody that's listening, right? Like it wouldn't. I wouldn't pin the fact that you decided that you should, you know, commit suicide to the dysphoria. It sounded like you were really depressed um, for whatever reason. Uh, and then also you had mentioned, which it, we don't have to get into the relationship, but you you basically, because I can't remember if, if in your story, the point of, you know, uh, kind of flirting with the idea of suicide, was that after you ordered hormones on the internet or before? Um. When I did, okay, well, up until about like three mm -hmm. years ago, I was completely self-medicating the entire time. And I, I was in okay. transition for eight years. Okay. From um, July 27th, 2012 to literally like mm -hmm. the end of June. No, no. It was literally almost a little over eight years on the dot. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like uh, within the week after my, my eight-year anniversary of it. But back to your, your point, uh, or your, your question. Um, yeah. Uh, so I had ordered hormones, uh, mm -hmm. for about, and I was on them for about three months until I met, um, my, uh, my ex fiance. Mm -hmm. Um, so I met her and things you know, got serious and everything. So I just stopped and I got rid of everything, all my stash of clothes and all, all that shit. So got rid of all and then, you know, entered into a, uh, about a five year long engagement. Yeah. Never could, never could pull the trigger on that one either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could, uh, do you mind me asking why you stopped? Uh, did it have anything to do with, you know, you, you just didn't want to bring it into a relationship or, you just weren't sure at the time. Uh, well, again, I still had all that prior programming going on. Okay. So, you know, so there was that, and then mm -hmm. the relationship that was great. She's a great person. Like I, like I said in my videos, I'm st I'm still yeah, friends with her to this absolutely. day. You know? mm -hmm. Um, she's a great human being, and and I still do love her, of course. Mm -hmm. But you know, <sighs> shit happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely get it. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically you, you know, you decided to stay alive, to choose life. But in doing that, um, not only did you decide you want to stay alive, but you decided in staying alive, you needed to transition because at that point it felt as though like this was defeating you, right? Yeah. It's kind of like uh, the the interview I watched uh, this morning um, of yours with the, the Thomas, with Thomas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it kind of, he, he had mentioned that like, um, something had to change, right. like I, I, something had to change. Like it just could not mm -hmm. continue on that path. Like mm -hmm. something big drastic had to change. And that's pretty much with me too. Yeah. Like I, I just, you know, I had to, had to get out of that path. Right. And forge a new one mm -hmm. through treacherous woods with no road. <laughs> Somehow we got to do what we got to do. And I mean, I, you're here now, so that's that's obviously good. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it feels kind of pointless to, pointless to uh, ask you why you transitioned, because you've clearly, you know, mentioned that. But, you know, how did, you know, if anybody wants to, wants to know in regards to ordering hormones online, um, I would think that that's probably not the safest route, but I'm assuming. It's, it's not. I don't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not at all. Yeah. Do you but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. You know? Yeah, no, I, I feel you. 
Uh, but do you think that in doing it that way, I mean, were you ever seeing a therapist while you were like self, you know, medicating or? I had no. Checking hormones levels or anything? No. No. <laughs> just went to the dark. I, I just, <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I did it all mm. on my own, man. Damn. Okay. And I just want to bring this up. Obviously, in your transition for eight years, yeah, you, you did grow breast and laser hair removal, right? Like, those are, the, if we're talking about major things that happened in your transition, those are the two things, right? And, I mean, not, no surgery. Right. But I, was, I was thinking about something yeah. on my way home because yeah, yeah. I still had fresh in my mind the Thomas interview and, and uh, and I was thinking, because he was talking about like, you know, how he had some surgeries. Yeah. And everything. And and I was thinking to myself, I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I never did any surgeries, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it had to do with because I'm I'm poor. <laughs> I'm not poor, but like, you know, I'm broke. Like I don't have any money. So it's like surgery is not an option. Yeah. You know? I, I and it's, you. it's kinda kinda a good thing that I, you know, didn't have any money. Hmm. Yeah, that would <laughs> I probably would have done it. I probably would have done it. I probably would have gone all the way. Do you think it's just like the the level of desperation that some of us get to that you don't even you're not able to really think long term consequences? You're just you feel so defeated by dysphoria that you're just like you're you're gonna go head first into this no matter what. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. All right. Obviously, now getting into the transition, uh, you you said might not be a direct quote, but you said something like uh, you realized it wasn't serving you anymore, like in a positive way, things became more difficult, um, dating became a joke, you were just miserable, right? Like it, the pros and cons were full on cons for you, right? Yep. I guess and related to what I just quoted, <laughs> how do you, in terms of that to now, um, how do, how has it changed for you? Like you had so many negative, negative things happening, including it didn't sound like your, uh, your mental health was doing good, obviously, but now it's, what is it like from then to now? Well, I mean, it's as far as mental health goes, I mean, it's better. Uh, it's a lot better, but you know, with new circumstances and, and yeah. whatnot comes new Right. problems things so you know um but of overall mm -hmm. over arch archway of mental health uh it, we're, yeah yeah we could um, yeah a lot better a lot better yeah mm -hmm. um definitely uh and something i talk about a lot in my videos is like you know my confidence is back like i had no zero confidence um when i was trans well the latter half of my trans um, cause I would still, I would, I would, I, here's the thing. Yeah. And it's fun. It's funny that I, I'm going to go back to Thomas again. Cause he said no, the, one good good. Thing about COVID, <laughs> the one thing, good thing about COVID is he had time to, to like reflect and shit. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and when he said that, I was like, dude, me too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, literally the, the one good thing about this whole pandemic is like, uh, you know, I took a good month and, and I was doing Uber Eats, at, you know, well, I'm still doing Uber Eats, but I was doing Uber Eats. And so it, it's a pretty lonely job, right? So you got mm -hmm. a lot of time in the car by yourself stuck yeah. in your head. Right? So I reflected and uh, on, on everything and, and come to conclusions and terms with things and, and made a plan to um oh what am i looking for what's the word uh made a plan to like not fix my life but like mm -hmm. like just internal work man you know what i mean yeah uh, and sorry i keep no you're good no worries <laughs> but like you know i just i did a lot of internal work in in figuring out like what I need to do to be happy again. Um, and yeah, this whole, this whole thing, which I'm sure if, if, if he said it and then now, and then I'm saying it, I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there 
mm-hmm. that have used this time that the world is in, in chaos, but use this time to uh, to to reflect on their life and what's going right. on and what they want, want to do and need to do and this, that, and the other thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, back to the original thing. I, I often go off in tangents, but... You're good. Um, but I say it a lot in my videos, man, like my, my confidence is up, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, people look at me differently. Um, and I just feel, I feel more like better <laughs> yourself, maybe like a little bit more yeah. like, did you, did you feel when you were trans, uh, you know, and living the world as as a trans woman right or as a woman basically like you assimilated to did you ever feel like at any point get to this uh level of just uh being comfortable in your own skin or or did you never feel like that did you feel like and i'm not saying this because i believe this about trans women or trans men obviously but uh, for your story and you know what happened with you, like, did you feel constantly like you were putting on like a facade in a way, or or did you ever feel like you know you're you're now a woman and because you mentioned confidence, so I'm just kind of wondering how that played into to that. Well, at first in the transition forever the first well the first cu- the first couple of years the first two years mm-hmm. like you know it was rough it was rough as hell because i i didn't pass and it yeah. was no. you know it was you know it sucked but after that though then all of a sudden one day i just noticed wow i i i see a difference now mm-hmm. um but i'll get into something later uh, about looking in the mirror but like right. I see a difference now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other people are starting to, and I'm not getting misgendered and, and, and things is just uh, working yeah. out, you know? Um, so that boosted my confidence. So like I said, in, in kind of in the beginning, like I did have confidence and I did feel good and comfortable in my skin and everything like that. And um, yeah. So, yeah. but then later on uh, mm-hmm. towards the latter half of my uh experience you know i lost that confidence because i I would look in the mirror and i would still Mm -hmm. see kevin Hmm. so like i would still see him and 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 i'm sure it's like that for everyone uh i don't know i i I can't speak to trans men though because like y'all y'all got it made (laughs) i wouldn't i I don't know (laughs) on some level i guess automatically lowers your voice we have to work on that yeah that's Um, true you know, you get the facial hair, you get muscle mass and everything. And mm. and other than the downstairs region, man, and, and you know, well, top. And, but if you have the top surgery after that, it's like, yeah. wow, you would never know unless you took your pants off. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. Uh, it's it's a little bit different for, uh, for I was going to make a joke about taking my pants off, but I won't. I won't go there. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, the, the difference is obviously there's a lot more work that you have to put into, you know, being a woman versus a man because of the t- – testosterone so mm-hmm. yeah i totally get that and, and i'm not knocking y'all like no no, no I, it's funny because now i'm i'm male to yeah. female to male so i'm mm-hmm. essentially i'm essentially a trans man now because like i, I do i need to get one of those binder things man <laughs> you want mine <laughs> send <laughs> it just, to me. i might send you mine um yeah, anyway I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> <Hang> on, <money. laughs> weird yeah this is definitely a different sort of a detrans conversation here um <laughs> But uh, I'm not sure. I'm not your sure average, whatever. That's anymore. yeah. That's what this is gonna be called. Not your average D trans with uh, Kevin. I saw um, that. I was like, oh, I used to yeah. The old channel or the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw I stole, what you did there. I was like, I, yeah, this yeah, guy's off. Awesome. I, <laughs> I tried to be a little bit clever, but I kind of stole some of you know your cleverness. So, so anyway, uh, kind of going into you definitely you mentioned this a lot. Like you talk about you know, how difficult was dating, um, how you felt as though your, you know, your downstairs area wasn't functioning correctly. Like the whole, just that, that part of your story, it seems like it was definitely a blow to like your opportunities as far as, you know, have, finding a partner. Was that ever something you thought of 
going into transition or no i didn't okay something i had to find out the hard way because there's there, a manual for this man you know no yeah totally there isn't um there isn't is that not something that um because i don't know obviously but uh do trans women not talk about this a lot like let's say when you went to i don't know ask certain people or to try to find information on this uh the changes that happen in your downstairs area and and how it functions less or whatever, or that's just totally not, not spoken of. Well, yes and no, not a lot of people will go into like, you know, super detail and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's somewhat common knowledge that like either a, and then actually it really, it, it all depends on, on your, um, dosage, I would say. Yeah. Um, cause in the beginning, my, my shit worked mm -hmm. great, but like I had no, uh, breast development or anything like that. Um, but it wasn't until I upped, I upped my dosage. Yeah. Um, is when things finally started happening. So I started getting the breast development, uh, and it, and it went fast. It was interesting. Like. I think I was about six years into the, the transition and all of a sudden, boom, they exploded. Um, but, but the counter, the counter to that is so yeah. that the, the boobs did their thing, but downstairs, like everything shrank, everything shrank. And, uh, hmm. um, yeah. And then, and then, it, and then I got like uninterested like lo completely lost my sex drive. Uh, yeah. Didn't even bait or anything like that. Um, and going back to Thomas again, cause he mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, atrophy. So it got painful whenever I did achieve a, Okay. Right. Know, so. No, it's it's fine. That was, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, damn. That's, I'm that's, an interesting character, I know. <laughs> that's why you're here. I like interesting people. Uh, yeah. That's Most so it they come. <laughs> <laughs> a unique outlook mm -hmm. on things. Okay, so it shrinks, and you lose it. Do you lose desire to? have sex or let's say masturbate because you uh, find it very unappealing that your you know your penis is shrink shrinking or is it also because you just and, it, and it's painful or does it also have to do with just your sex drive is is really just gone well like okay it's As far as like sex goes, like yeah, no, it sucked because like I was still, you know, I'm, I've, I'll maintain that I've always like, like that I am into women, like mm -hmm. so I guess I would have been the trans lesbian or whatever, but um, yeah, the, the, the there was a benefit to everything shrinking. Mm -hmm. It made tucking a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, let me okay. tell you, right? Because uh, when you're when your stuff is its normal size, it it gets pretty uncomfortable and and it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it was. I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, but it was, it sucked. So once everything shrank and everything, it, it was yeah good in that aspect. Um, hmm. But yeah, no, it, it sucked because, you know, like I, I, I just, I just want somebody that loves me, you know? Yeah. Don't we all <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. And I, I feel and, that. And I, you know, I enjoy sex just as much as the next person, mm -hmm. but like, it just, it got to the point where it was just impossible. Like the last time I had sex, uh, it was, it was not enjoyable. It, yeah. it was painful. And, uh, even, even, uh, orgasm like hurt, like, Mm -hmm. And nothing comes out either. Well, maybe a little bit of the clear stuff, but that's it. You it's know, boring. nothing comes out. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Uh, it's, that's it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like I said, because of the atrophy and everything, like it's just, it was painful. It just was not enjoyable. 
at all. I guess maybe if I used it more, that would have never happened, and it probably would be a completely different story, but I didn't, so there you what go. Is it? Okay. Yeah, they do say if you if you don't use it, you lose it, huh? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, guess, I guess that one turned out true. <laughs> yeah. Who knew it? Who knew it? Yeah. So this is probably kind of personal, but I, I'm kind Go of for it. I'm curious. I have to ask. So then you detrans and the I mean, obviously you mentioned you know needing to get a binder because now essentially you have breasts but you're a man and full you know. okay and but with your downstairs you know area like does that just naturally grow back or yeah like everything just goes back to normal the only thing that if you do transition as a biological male basically with if you don't get any surgeries what what doesn't go back to normal is you don't lose obviously breasts that you grow am i correct yeah yeah that's okay cool, but those will always be there. I mean, I guess if I wasn't a lazy fuck, like, I, you know, I could work out and work out that stuff. So it at least would like, yeah, be mostly muscle, but like, right, yeah. Yeah, it'll never just go away. The tissue's there. Like I would have to do top mm -hmm. surgery, like a F to M. I would imagine, I don't know. I'm not a doctor or a scientist or anything like that. Okay. Fucking YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so I guess the trans wise, physical stuff we've talked about and mentally you've mentioned like there's just been confidence boost. So, you know, overall you feel more, you know, cause we hear this a lot in the community, right. Which we're about to get into, you know, oh, you, boy. <laughs> right. You know, shit to say about that. They've, they've basically ruined the word authentic for me. Cause they're always like your oh, authentic God. self, you know, um, and then somebody detransitions and, you know, they don't get any goddamn praise or anything. It's just like, uh, you know, the most you'll get from trans people is, yeah, we support you. And, and that's the end of it, right? You're, nobody's going to start like uh, a GoFundMe or anything to provide you with a binder if you need one right now, right? Like you're mm -hmm. just kind of like completely forgotten because you're no longer a part of this community. And in, in fact, you have no community, right? So no, I haven't been a part of the community in years. Yeah. Why is that? Do you tell? Uh, well, I, apparently I'm a traitor and, and, a, mm -hmm. and a terrible person and yeah. all that. Uh, a lot of that stems from my political views. Uh, but, you know, I'm a traitor, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Fucking yeah, but po political views aside, though, you're – and I mean, just to be clear, right, like you're right-leaning like, like I am, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, but aside from that – though you know because i don't think well n it's not that i don't think it, it, it is a fact right there's a lot of people who see the transgender community in the same way that we do and they're not necessarily right-leaning uh, but your views on the transgender community you know even when you were trans to, to now it is what exactly um my wait i'm sorry like how you sorry how you see the transgender community oh, um before okay. and, and now like did anything change and how do you see the transgender community well i mean in the beginning like mm -hmm. in the beginning like it, it yeah it was very helpful it was it was a true community uh yeah. this was like you know the the early teens is that what we yeah. call it the teens <laughs> the early teens and uh well even before that like because i mean i i've been like in chat rooms and here and there, like since, you know, the internet yeah. started, but like, and, and they were extremely helpful even back then. They're like, mm -hmm. Oh girl, you know, femme out. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and I'm like 20 years old. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. <laughs> but, uh, but no, like even in the beginning of my actual transition, like, yeah, no community was strong and, 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 like um helpful and and nice even uh but it wasn't until you know i want to say like 2015 16 ish uh i think the community just got corrupted and like infiltrated with all these like all this left-leaning ideals yeah like and, radical left-leaning yeah yeah. Yeah. And, yeah 
and and it is nuclear dude it's so yeah. divisive and terrible and 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 th the thing about it is like it, and i'm going to i'm going to blow people's minds right now <clears throat> uh, if you think this way to mm -hmm. your viewers is what i'm saying yeah. I'm blow your minds here for a second now so like i said so the trans community got infiltrated by all these this, these ideals, right? Yeah. And they're so militant by it. And, and and it's like, you can't think any other way but this way, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't, you're a traitor and, and, and all this, and they, they pretty much excommunicate you from the community, right? It's like, you either think like we do or you go, yeah. go, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that happened to me, you know? And I even made a video way back, uh, uh, I can't remember exactly when, but there's a video on, on my thing somewhere uh, about like, you know, uh, why I left the trans community or why I hate the trans community. I, I can't remember, but then I'm still trans at that point too. So you'll mm -hmm. see looking a lot yeah. different. But uh, my point is though, is here's where, here's where your minds are going to get blown. So, yeah. So I had that falling out with the community and I'll always do quotations when I say the trans community, because I don't feel that it is. I, th yeah. I feel it. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's totally fake. Mm -hmm. And so around, uh, we'll say the end of 2017, mm -hmm. maybe October ish, about around the end of October, 2017 is when I, uh, truly like, saw something in, in Donald Trump, right? Um, oh, man. And, well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's where I'm going to go with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, you know, I've been banished from my, mm -hmm. my trans community, right? Well, and, and then I'm discovering uh, Donald Trump. And um, so I start, you know, talking to, like, MAGA people and everything. And, and they, and I'm trans, by the way. And I'm trans. Yeah. They welcomed me with open arms. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, they no, I believe you. No shits about it. it. Never even an issue. Anybody I ever talked to, and yet they're painted as the racists, as the as the you know the xenophobes, as the fucking the trans haters or whatever mm -hmm. that they, they like to call them. But they're not. <laughs> they're not. Well, well, I have to jump in here and just obviously we agree that. Some people on the right can be and are, but everybody, okay. Yeah. Every, every side has their bad apples. One hundred percent. Okay. Good. They're yeah. not all one hundred percent good, and they're not all yeah. one hundred percent mm -hmm. bad. But the majority, and I like to call them the silent majority, the majority don't care about shit like that. They just want their country to be great again. <laughs> not burning down. <laughs> not burning down. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, yes. uh, I, I I completely can relate to all that, right? That's a huge, you know, as somebody who also did vote, you know, for Trump in 2016, the way, the way my political belief, I personally have always seen it separate from the fact that I'm transsexual. Like, to me, it has nothing to do with one or the other. I understand, you know, we could say, in with certain laws sure but regardless uh you know if if i don't agree with something that the left or the right is doing that mm -hmm. might infringe on the fact that i'm trans that's that's one whole separate case it doesn't mean that because of this one thing i completely oh. abandon everything else the left or the right believes in mm -hmm. and and that's kind of like where i'm just like okay so you know and and you're right absolutely like i i, I get called a bootlicker, I don't know how many times, a transphobe, a bigot, you know, all of this because not only, because I don't take these boxes, right? There's certain boxes you have to tick if you're a trans person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's, you have to be left-leaning. You have to believe that biological sex is a spectrum or a yep. social construct or whatever. You have to believe in like a thousand gender identities. You have to believe yep. that, you know, people that. on the right, like there's all these boxes that you uh -huh. have to tick, you know, and um, which is something I've been thinking about a lot because I have certain people that have been holding certain views of the transgender community are changing. And, and I see this happen and I'm like, it starts with one thing, right? Like if I, if I right now say that, 
uh, you know, everybody, every every feminist is, is a, a turf. For example, that's one box that I tick. What is a turf? A turf is a trans exclusionary radical feminist. But but my point is is like it, <laughs> once you uh, once once you give them something, right? They'll start. But it has to be like you have to bash something that they don't believe in for them to start maybe embracing you in, which is crazy because like why does it take me? bashing women for you to then say wait hold on mars might might be an okay guy let's listen to the rest of what he has to say um which is bizarre because i don't see that from anybody who is right leaning they don't say you know well you have to you have to bash the left on certain things for us to set to embrace you right it, it's i haven't seen that and i don't get that experience from people on the right because like you said you've been embraced i've been full-on embraced i'm supposed to according to where i live you know in kansas I should be killed. Like I should have, I should be completely oppressed here. Yet I've had a way better experience living here than I did in a very liberal place like Denver. So what does that tell me? That tells me that what they're trying to get me to believe is actually not true. It's mm -hmm. by a person's experience. So maybe we should start being individuals and not believing everything an entire group wants you to, to believe, you know? Yeah. Well, I live in Tucson, Arizona, uh, which is this little blue corner in a red state right yeah 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 and uh so but it's a, it's still at the same time it's a red state so same thing with you like i should have been whatever you know whatever they yeah, think right. that, that the right does but it's them man <laughs> it's, Crazy. it's projection it's projection mm, it is. they're projecting their beliefs onto us to uh make us look bad and them look good but it, the, the Democratic Party was the party of racism. Okay, mm -hmm. <clears throat> look up the history. I'm not not yeah. Mars, but oh, no, no. You know, yeah, look up you. the history. Yeah, yeah. But, that's uh, all. I don't know. Um, like, I, there's th there's a lot going on in this world right now that is just ridiculous. Call me a conspiracy theorist or whatever, but mm -hmm. like, there's there are agendas going on, and and I do believe. See, I'm going to go into left field, right field. I, I don't know. I'm going to go into a field. <laughs> we'll go to the field. All right. I'll follow oh, you. Let me, let me also make this, make this clear. Um, I, I am a registered independent, okay, uh, because I do not like the two-party duopoly. Um, yeah, I get, I get it. Divisive nonsense. Like – yeah, do I vote Republican esque? Yes, um, but I'm not going to put myself into those boxes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, because if you if you want me to be completely honest, uh, I, I'm as far as my my be belief structure, I guess I, it's more of uh, I, I'm, I align more with libertarians than anything, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, less yeah. government, more freedom. I want that. <laughs> gotcha. um but anyway the thing i was gonna say is like i i, I truly believe that there's some sort of takeover coming and and it's been in the works for years and years and years that's what i this is why i think that uh let me let me think here i, I don't want to like frame this the wrong way i get i i, I get what you're saying because i by the way, can I just say something like yeah. it really, you know, you, you, before you even get into this, you went ahead and said, you know, that you, you're not a conspiracy theorist or things, things like that. And I, I find it rather interesting because I find myself doing that too. You know, I have to put this disclaimer out there. Mm -hmm. I don't really see people on the left say this, right. But they'll go on about Russia's doing this and that. Like yeah. they, they have conspiracy theory ever. They have no shame though. You never hear them say, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist or uh, sorry if this comes off like they just say that shit. But for some reason, I, well, I think it's because I'm paranoid about being put in a box um, because I, I know how it sounds. I know how it can sound, think but I, the, I, the huh? word, let's think of it this way. The term, the term conspiracy theorist was, was created by, we'll say the CIA to dismiss a critical thinker. Okay. So that it's, it puts a stigma on the person that is, yeah digging into something they shouldn't be and uh it's the way to get the 
general public not to believe you. Yeah. If you find something that's fucked up, they don't want that. Right. Yeah. Totally. It's, but uh, they want the, they want people to point the finger at you and laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, back to what you were saying. No, that that was pretty much it. But I, I was just saying, like, it's you know, I always find that anybody who's like center right or to the right, you know, they're always having to like apologize for sounding like a certain way. It's like we need to stop doing that. Who cares? <laughs> like, you know, um, but I know how it sounds. Totally, I get how somebody might hear me saying this stuff. Um, but I agree. You know, I've thought about this and I've tried to not think this way, but I'm like, I feel like this isn't something that happened overnight. This has been slowly coming and now it's rapidly here and yeah. not, you know, de-escalating at all. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll let you keep going. Sorry. Basically what I, uh, my, what I, the, the thought that I have uh, mm -hmm. to get out there is just that uh, I think that and I'm not saying that there aren't true trans people out there. And I believe mm -hmm. you are, Mars. Like, I, I'm not saying that there isn't. Yeah. Uh, but I think for, I think the reason why there's so many people detransitioning now uh, is is because everything has been, first of all, we all have a lot of time to think now. And anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. But, yeah, what I'm trying to say though is like I, I truly believe though that there was this big push in the late uh, 2000s, uh, early teens. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna hold still. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. When my brain yeah. starts working. I, I. No worries. Yeah. So you believe that there was this push coming? There's well, the, the, but the trans thing, like, and and I think that a lot of people, because. This goes back to what Thomas was saying, like how the, the healthcare industry doesn't really care. Yeah. Like when I finally did get uh, an actual truce prescription and all that stuff, like yeah. I just told them I want this, 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 and this, and these are the these are the uh, doses that I want. And and the doctor's just like, okay. No pushback, mm -hmm. no nothing, no nothing, no nothing. They they right. want us doing this. And I and I I I I, I figured it out, dude. Like there is this 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 takeover mm -hmm. call it we'll just call it the socialist takeover right and i think what i think what's going on is like so they're trying to pacify a lot of the strong males mm -hmm. um and in, in in multiple ways but this is one of the avenues to, to pacify, you know, the strong yeah. man. I was, I was, you know, you know, I pulled fucking cabs off F one fifties all day long, you know, tear down mm -hmm. an engine and all sorts of shit. You know, I, I, I wasn't like, wasn't like a big buff dude or anything, but like, yeah. I, I will, I am, I will not hesitate to fire on someone. Yeah. If they're fucking with whatever. Anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's just one of the avenues. Right. So I think, I think there's just like it's a lot of suggestive mm -hmm. stuff out there to to sway people different directions and everything. Yeah, I believe you know this over trans thing, like because he was talking about it too. No, no pushback, no nothing. Like you know, yeah. making you question your decisions of why you want to do this. There's nothing like that. It's just like oh, here you go. All right, you want to be trans? Yeah. And then he was talking about the. Um, Cause I never went to any of this stuff. So like, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. cool that I actually watched that video before I came on, but yeah. um, you know, and, and what he was saying about like the, uh, the groups that he was in and everything, it's like, Oh, well he's, he's just gatekeeping or whatever, you know? So go to another person. This guy's good. He'll give you what you want. You yeah. know, it, it's not good. Right. Really exactly. Good. Yeah. And then, and then this gets one of the other avenues that I'm noticing that's being pushed so hard is this, this woke uh, feminist uh, nonsense that's going on in Hollywood now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of nonsense going on in Hollywood or as I like to call it pedo wood, but anyway, you know, it's, it, it's happening with star Wars and, and, and yeah, yeah. like, they're just, they're just, they're, they're making men. They're just, they're pushing like, the strong woman and all that stuff and like just degrading men. They're now. basically, and, not that I, not, and I'm not against yeah, like, yeah. you know, equality and all that stuff, but like they're doing it so yeah. brazenly and, and just, and, and just <sighs> smugly. Yeah. No, I, it's, I, I, it's yeah, just yeah. downright offensive at this point. Cause they're really making it seem as though in order to be, I don't know, a strong female, you have to be more masculine, which is, is yeah. weird. You no, know? 
They're like the. I feel. I always feel like the intent could be coming from a good place, but it always the delivery is just shit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and like the the example I like to I like to use as far as the Hollywood thing goes, like look what they did to Luke Skywalker. This is fucking Luke Skywalker we're talking about, and he turns into this grouchy, grumpy old fucking hermit that tosses yeah. his fucking lightsaber away. Like fuck it, right? right? Yeah. Like, and and then and then he. I don't know. It's, it's weird. It was right. not what I was expecting Luke Skywalker <laughs> to be after 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. It was very, <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it was just bad. Yeah, no, it's odd. But then Ray, but then Ray, this, this, this uh, Mary Sue that, that can do everything and everybody likes her and had no training whatsoever is just, just automatically badass at the force and everything. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, There's no character development there. I think the idea, and it's not, I mean, it's hard not to think that th- this is part of whatever idea is coming from, you know, far leftists. It's like they hate traditions. They hate, you know, the cis heteronormative world. Um, so it's like you, they consistently push this concept of, you know, men are soft and weak or they should be. And women are strong and could be masculine. Women can be anything, apparently, um, even if it's unrealistic. But, yeah, and it's, again, like, I feel like, you know, women and men should be allowed to wear whatever, be whatever. That's totally, I'm I'm down with that. Yeah. But, con- but constantly trashing on anybody who is, you know, straight, white, male, for example, mm-hmm. and then making it seem like, you know, women have to be a certain way because they're not even making it seem like, women can be, you know, feminine or masculine or whatever. They're making it seem like being feminine is now in a way bad and you should be rough around their edges. So masculine, in fact, that you now, I mean, and this is why we see so many detransitioners, right? Like so many young girls who want to be boys. Like, why do you think that is? It's probably because this like woke level of feminism is partially influencing the idea of, you should be ashamed and hate the fact that you're a woman. Um, yeah. Again, just to be, let me throw this out there because I have a lot of feminists that follow me. I'm not saying that, you okay. know, the 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 construct of or the expectations of what women should wear and be like isn't also a part of the problem. That obviously is, you know, in society. Like, I completely get how there's this expectation that women should be soft and and this and that. I get that, but also, you know, this level of feminism has a part in in it and i wish that a new type of feminism can just wipe that one out because it's Mm -hmm. not it's not fucking helping it's not at all you know and and like i said i i'm all for equality i'm all for um you know strong women i mean Look you at, look at, grew up look around at, the time i did right the past yeah, yeah well, i don't know how old are you i just turned 30 I'm, I'm, yeah exactly i mean my i'm uh 30 yeah. Six, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you were, you were born in the early eighties, right? So, yeah, me too. Eighty one. Um, you know, I I grew up with. Okay, you want to talk strong women? I grew up with uh, Sarah Connor. You know, Dude, yeah, exactly. Badass. We didn't have to cram all this bullshit down our throat. Exactly. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger got his 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 strong role, and 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 Sarah Connor was there too, and 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 like yeah. you know, she was a badass. But see, here's the thing, and here's what they're doing with like the newer Terminators. Especially the newest one where uh, Sarah Connor or uh, Linda Hamilton's back in it. Yeah, well, I did, uh, sadly. And I love those movies, but I didn't want to watch it because, uh, you know. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, I don't know why I watched it. I just felt I should. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so like Sarah, like they, they rise up all the female characters because there's three mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. You know, and then Arnie is just, you know, a side note, really. And then, and, oh, and then they kill off John Connor in the very beginning. Like the oh, fuck, dude. John. Okay, so now. Anyway, I don't want to get spoiler alert. <laughs> oh yeah, spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I don't, it's been out for a while. I'm sure. Yeah, no, no. It's, Once it has seen it. Um, but yeah. like it, it's like. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Arnie takes a back seat. You kill off John Connor, and and now the the, the women are gonna take over. Like that's that to me is bullshit. Like. Right. Terminator 2, the all-time greatest, one of the all-time greatest movies ever made. Like, one of them, you know? Mm-hmm. It was just this epic chase, you know? And, and and everybody got their equal, like, badassness. 
You know, Sarah Connor was a fucking badass in that movie. Especially that scene where she's in the hospital, she's doing the pull-ups. And, oh my god, yeah. Right? <laughs> I remember so, watching the movie theater. There, there has always been strong females in the past, yeah. and, and and they don't need all this nonsense. Like mm-hmm. one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, series of just I love Star Trek. I'm a big Star Trek nerd. All right, and and Star Trek's always had strong females, man. Like, like Kira Norris from DS9, mm-hmm. also Judzia Dax. Yeah. Um, and and the list goes on, but DS9 is my favorite, so of course I'm going to mention that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like you know, there are so many examples. Like, uh, what's her face from the Alien movies? Uh, she is a badass. Uh, Weaver. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's always been strong badass women, right? But now we gotta we gotta put this stigma and all this other bullshit into it, and it's just it fucking pisses me off. Right. Yeah. I grew up, you know, being able to relate to and and look up to you know, female characters or male characters, they were never over the top, like ridiculous the way they are now. Now it's mm-hmm. kind of like, like you said, in order for a, a female lead to be seen as strong in a movie or a show, you know, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times they have to make the male seem so weak. And I'm like, I don't, I just don't get that. We never did that back then. And yet, you know, I right. I don't know. I never felt like as a child that I had no, no badass like women to look up to. I always did. Now I feel sorry for these kids because, like, I don't know what do they even have. Like, it's it's just not the same at all. No, no, it's not. It's you know, I, I've been saying this a lot lately. I think mm-hmm. it all. I think it all started. It all started with participation trophies. Possibly, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, have to work hard and be good at this sport or whatever you know you don't have to because guess what you get a trophy anyway right yeah. <laughs> anyway don't worry don't worry if you lose you'll be fine yeah just come back and suck again next year but these guys will still be good because they practice. yeah no i mean if we're if we're all winners then then what is there if we're all winners what then what is there to work for yeah we're all entitled and when exactly. we don't get what we want well we're gonna throw a fit and burn down your house <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> that's why we are where we are, sir. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I feel like that's part Good of it, job. dude. Yeah. Um, for sure. But, uh, God, we totally trailed off. I want to go back to, uh, okay, yeah. the transgender community though. Cause you had mentioned, well, two things, right. That were a part of, Oh, wait, hold on. Let me go back to this too. Cause you said true trans. So I kind of agree, but not, I don't know. I don't know if it true trans would, would be the best way to say it. I just feel like there are some people, and I don't believe there are that many of us that benefit for whatever reason. I I, I personally can't explain it or, or give you guaranteed proof, except that it works for me. You know, you'd, you'd have to believe my words. But I just feel like some people really do benefit f- from medical transition. You know, we just do, and I don't know if that necessarily means that we're we're truly dysphoric or we're truly trans or we're truly I don't know born in the wrong body, whatever. I, I don't know. I just do believe that there are few of us, not as many as the transgender community wants to claim we're all valid. <laughs> we're not. Um, another thing that you've said a couple times now is time to, re- to reflect. And you're not the first person that I've heard this um, from that, you know, the pandemic, yeah, it has sucked, but it's rather interesting that there's been people that I've heard, you know, get, say stuff like, because I had time to think about all this, I'm rethinking what I'm doing, which uh, just makes me think of, you know, this push to transition kids, right? Like we want a world of valid 10 year old trans kids, but the argument that many of us have said, which has been proven in the past is that if you just give a kid time, more likely they will grow out of it. And if that's not true, then how do you explain you know, a grown adult such as yourself going through a summer of sitting and waiting or not sitting and waiting, but, you know, reflecting on your life and then coming out of it thinking, you know what, this isn't for me. I think time plays a very important part in, in everybody's life. I don't know if, if I that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Um, but a, again, kind of where I wanted to go with a transgender community, you had said a couple of things in regards to detransitioning, one, you said that you felt like the idea of transition for you anyways, was it felt like a trap. And the other thing was that you didn't feel like, you know, you could be a free thinking individual. Yep. 
And you also just felt, uh, did you feel like part of the transition was, yeah, because of that too, right? Like, because you felt that you couldn't even be your, your own self, even though the community says you're valid, you know, you're a woman as much as anybody else, they will also say, you can't speak your mind. Uh, you know, how much did all of that kind of go along with your, your decision to detransition? <laughs> um, I would say that's a good 50% of it. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, a lot of it, just, I just got turned off to the whole thing. Like just mm -hmm. because of how divisive this country, this planet has become. Yeah. Uh, I just got turned off to it. Like the people that are supposed to be my, my support, my fucking allies, my whatever, you know, like they they hate me because yeah. I support our president. Like right. how stupid is that? Yeah. They exactly. hate me. And you know what? I welcome your hate. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I say that's a good 50% of it. Mm. Um, the rest, like, you know, 25%, like, just, you know, the, the sexual part that we talked about earlier. And the other 25% is, uh, I don't know, wait. Where, basically, where was I going with that? <laughs> well, basically, in regards to your detransition, you know, a lot of it, well, obviously, it wasn't for you, right? You're mentally, you weren't doing so well. Oh, yeah. Well, here, actually, here, here you go. Mm -hmm. um, here's what the other 25% is. And uh, this is going to be an exclusive to you, Mars. Oh man, I mean, I've never, I've never right talked on. about this. You know? Okay, I'm psyched. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know how I said I'm not religious at all or everything mm. like that in the beginning. Um, yeah. Well, I'm not religious. I hate organized religion, right? Yeah. But I am, I am spiritual, spiritual, right? Mm. Uh, I do believe in spirit. I do believe in um, karma and uh, reincarnation and all that shit, right? Well, I shouldn't say shit, but you know, all that stuff. Period. Yeah. Um, and I do believe in the soul's experience. And mm -hmm. I also in all that time of reflection and whatnot, like I, I truly do believe that I like I'm not I never was trans. I kind of yeah. refer to it as like uh the the Native Americans, they 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 have a a, a belief of uh people that are too spirited. Like there's yeah. literally two spirits inside one person, right? Yeah. And I believe that's actually what I am. Um, because I had my, my the first 30 years of my life, I had my, my all just 100% male experience, right? Yeah. And I think that that was the, the, the Kevin soul, you know? And then I believe that there is actually, a, or was, and I'll get to that in a second, mm -hmm. but there was a Kira soul you know and i think that each of them needed to have their own separate experience solo you know the other one just takes a back seat mm -hmm. whatever and um and then that you know then kira has her experience i think what had happened though is i've got i reached as far as i needed to go in the cure experience experience yeah and um and i when I reflected on everything and, you know, and I did a little bit of meditation and I did, a, I did a, like, I, I, I reached deep within me, you know? Yeah. And I think what happened was, is, you know, both of them got what they needed and I think they just merged yeah. and here I am, Kevin 2.0. Okay. But with both, <laughs> but with both experiences. So mm -hmm. like, I, I also like to, you know, I'm not trying to like say that I'm this, this ultimate fucking human or anything like that, but yeah, like, yeah. Gotcha. I, I'm just, I think that I am truly going to be a better man now that I have both experiences uh, of both genders, you know, and I could take what I learned as a female um, into the future and just be, have that, you know, uh, the knowledge basically. Yeah. Knowledge, you know, the female in, uh, energy, the, the feminine and the masculine can, can co coexist and gotcha. co. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. uh, that's, that's kind of what I believe that happened to me. That's, you know, I, I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. that's the way I kind of look at it because yeah. I don't have any regrets of detransitioning. Um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm here, here I am. I think I'm that's Kevin. awesome. <laughs> I think that's awesome. And I think, uh,
Kevin 2.0 is, <coughs> yeah. I mean, you, I, I kind of saw some of your older videos and your, the level of energy that you have today just seems, I don't know how to describe it. You see more live. So, you know, and I never, I never put, I'm going to go back to Thomas again because he also said another thing <laughs> that I just realized like, yeah, he was talking about the haziness, the, the, the foggy mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, dude, like it yeah. got to the point where like, you know, I, I would stutter all the time. I could, I couldn't, I would lose my train of thought like that. And, you know, and it was very hard doing YouTube videos. Um, and yeah, no, I, I do, I do feel that there was some sort of like hazy mind or, uh, fuck, what was the word? Like fog. Was that? Brain, fog? Mind. Yeah. Brain fog. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I, when he, when he said that, I started thinking, I was like, yeah, dude. That's true. I had that too. I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's cleared up a lot. And, and, and of course now the confidence is there and I mm -hmm. think I just have a much more fluidity to my yeah. delivering of deliverance. -ness. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, interesting, there's actually quite a bit of detransitioners that talk about brain fog. So I don't know what I, I, never, heard, I never heard of it until I, I watched, yeah. I watched that this morning yeah it's weird because i it makes me reflect a lot and i'm always like you know every time um i talk to somebody and they talk about being on having brain fog while they transition i'm always like do i is that me too like do i and it's bizarre because i i feel like the the opposite has happened for me that's why it's it's very it's intriguing and fascinating to hear your story and, and other detransitioners because i'm like so weird because like the opposite has happened i feel more confident uh, less likely to get brain fog unless I eat the wrong thing, but yeah, you know, um, you know, I have a theory, possibly, uh, the, the people, uh, granted the only other person that I've heard talk about this was Thomas and he detransitioned also. So yeah. maybe, maybe if that has to do with, uh, being truly trans and not being truly trans. So yeah. if you're getting, if you're experiencing the opposite, then mm. then you are, my friend, truly trans. Whereas me and Thomas, not so much. Are truly D trans? <laughs> We're truly D trans. <laughs> truly D trans. Yeah. Should start. Uh, that should, that should be coined now. True true right? D trans. Um, true. <laughs> I probably couldn't even say it. <laughs> truly D. I Tongue stumble on my words. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm going to have to go ahead and just. I'm gonna throw obviously all your all your links down below, but I might I might as well put Thomas's episode down there because you promoted the shit out of it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like anybody watching is like is probably gonna be like, who's Thomas? And so I'll put the link for Thomas's episode down below so you can watch that and and understand what he's talking about. But yeah, uh, it's been awesome talking to you. Obviously, we got a little bit political, but that was inevitable with uh, our agreements. But yeah, yeah, man, anytime you want to chat, you know, or whatever. Yeah, it, I'd like to have you on my on my channel sometime. Uh, anytime, for sure. Yeah, I, it was a great chat. And to anybody that is going to watch this episode in the future, thanks for checking it out. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Thomas. Like I said, his link's down below. Follow him on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. And until Thank next you. time, yeah, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for being so open with your story. Really appreciate mm -hmm. you. And uh, – until next time, as always, everybody, take it easy. Peace.